you good morning everybody or afternoon or evening I am helping a friend find a new kayak and that reminds me about when I was shopping for a kayak what are the things have I learned now kayaks I do have a uh, really good video on choosing a kayak so I want you guys to look at that on how to choose the physical kayak um, it's not all about price you want something that you can plan for and keep and be happy with for many years so after you choose a kayak okay kayaks a good kayak is going to run you eh, 800 to a thousand dollars for a good kayak fishing kayak so but is that everything that you're going to need is that fishing kayak well no <laughs> Most kayaks do not come with paddles, so you're going to have to invest eh, about a hundred bucks into a, a, a good paddle and make sure one fits you. So something that's big enough or small enough or whatever it is that fits your size and your kayak and where you're sitting on that kayak. So a paddle is one of those necessities. You don't want to be up the creek without a paddle. <laughs> and it, you need to add quite a bit more to this budget besides buying a kayak. You know, a lot of people have gotten their, I don't know, their government relief checks. So you may be thinking about it. It's spring, so um, it's in the air. <laughs> we want to get out on the open water. So you're going to have to get some safety equipment that is required by law. One is a PFD, a life vest of some kind. Make sure it fits you, because I had one that was like choking my neck once and make sure it fits you and um, it's loose you don't want one that comes too high up underneath the uh, armpits make sure that it's sort of a three-piece one um, I'm not crazy about those self-inflating ones because once they inflate they're done it's over and you may fall out of the kayak so uh, that's where why you need the PFD um, also you'll need to have a whistle make sure you attach that to your PFD or inside a pocket on the PFD and a light so if you do fall in you can whistle and you can shine a light and by the way I have used that uh, one time I had to call 911 out on Klamath Lake North Klamath Lake so um, make sure that you know these things actually those safety equipment and you're probably you know a good PFD is going to run you about 70 bucks so um, and then the whistle and the light no big deal right so now, things to add to your kayak. So, the very first thing I add to my kayak, uh, it's going to sound weird, but you'll appreciate it. It's an anchor. I know. You're going to need an anchor. Because kayaks, they like to float away. <laughs> so, you want to be able to stay, you know, when you find your spot, set it down and be stationary. An anchor is probably the, the greatest thing you can add to a kayak that doesn't cause you frustration. Now, I happen to like the mushroom, you know, design. Now, the mushroom designs are really nice. They're not clunky or anything. Unfortunately, sometimes they work really well, and I had to cut a couple loose. <laughs> so, um, sometimes they get stuck, and uh, you have to, I had to cut it loose. But an anchor, uh, I don't like those folding ones. Um... They don't work very well for me. Um, so you might want to look and see maybe a small mushroom anchor uh, with at least a 100-foot cord on it. Now, there's anchor trolleys. Now, the advantage of an anchor trolley, which I don't have one, um, is that you can position the anchor anywhere up and down your kayak. So it allows you to position the kayak for casting in the spot that you want, which is great. Um, I haven't done got an anchor trolley yet because, you know, I'll just turn and twist and do what I need to do in order to get. And I can I can cast backwards and left handed and right handed. So I don't think I really need it. It would be more convenient. So but definitely get an anchor with your um, your kayak. And that's going to run you, you know, you know, a 10 pound mushroom anchor is about 20 bucks and then paracord you know, another 10 or something. I don't know. Never so about 30 or 30 bucks or so for that. So, um, so what is it? What are we up to? 
and that's about seventy dollars and that's about thirty dollars so all right so rod holders almost all fishing kayaks have tracks systems buy two rod holders because the ones in the back are a pain in the rear so I always buy two of these rod holders they're going to run about twenty five dollars each so rod holders you know that's another fifty dollars so that's uh th those are nice to have them just right up there it's also nice to put you know if you've got a net which by the way you want to buy a net so when you're pulling in big large mouth bass are, are real easy to land but uh trout which are big here in oregon they're big uh they bite on little hooks you know you just want to scoop them up as fast as you can so a good net is going to run you about thirty dollars and um and you just want to be able to scoop out that fish as fast as you can um, in the from the water. Also, just you know, little things like bungee cords. I know most of these have um, have their bungees on them, which mine does. I have a real nice kayak, but you still will be using a bungee cord or two, um, you know, on your on your kayak. Really cheap, you know, a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there. Um, also, uh, a fish finder. Now, it's not a necessity, but sure is nice. So, you can buy a Garmin Striker 4, which I have a, several videos on it. Um, the Striker 4 is only about $100. And if you like to, and if you really want to catch fish and go to where they are and understand where they are underneath you, and what they're doing, you really need a fish finder. Fish finders also will, um, like the Garmin, the, the, it'll tell you the water temperature. Well, that tells you a lot, too, on where the fish are, too, by water temperature. Now, I also suggested buying just a pool thermometer um, and just putting that in the water. So that helps a lot. Um, so maybe a pool thermometer is a fish finder, you know, five bucks instead of a hundred. Yeah, put it on your wish list. Somebody will get it to you as a gift. Um, now, the fish finders also need a 12-volt battery. So they're not very much. They're about 40 bucks. So you're looking at, you know, about 150 bucks um, for a fish finder setup. Nice thing about fish finders, too, um, fish find, this one has got a GPS system on it. And you can just click, hit a button, and mark a spot where you saw fish and you could go back to that spot or you could find your way back to the um, to where you uh, launched so those are all really nice things I mean the GPS can actually save your life you never know if you get lost you know and I've gone on you know Shasta Lake is huge and then you go this and that and this and that um, or even rivers um, this allows you to um, navigate um, by GPS uh, on your fish finder also, find those spots that were good. You know, I, I hit one spot, I think it dries up. I'll go to another spot, another spot, another spot. And then I go back to that spot, and the fish are back at that spot. So, a fish finder. Garmin Striker 4. Um, if you just want a simple, great, all-around, portable fish finder, that is a great one. And you'll see several videos. In fact, I think I even did a playlist on it. I'll put it up here. Uh, the playlist on the Garmin. Also, you may want, um, you need tackle boxes. Now, tackle boxes nowadays have changed a lot. It used to be boxes that you carried with drawers and trays and stuff like that. But nowadays, you just you have Plano boxes. And um, Plano boxes can go on the side, next to your seat, underneath your seat, wherever you want. I have a hard time turning around you know, in my boat, you know, grabbing everything from behind me. I, I this is my fat belly, but uh, I just can't, I have a hard time doing it. So I always like to have my tackle and I like tomorrow we're going to go out and I've already got my tackle boxes, my two, those two. These are the two I'll be using. And that's got everything I need for tomorrow. Simplify, simplify. Although, you know, I'll probably, I'll have all the other stuff, but those are the ones that are going to be under my seat. 
So just a couple of tackle boxes, you're not going to cost very much, and you can go to Walmart, get them for a few bucks. Not very much. Also, um, if you like to record yourself, get a waterproof camera. You know, I've got a really nice video on Cam Park, um, this one. Doo -doo, little guy. Um, looks like a GoPro, but it works really, really well. Uh, $40. And it has all the accessories and two batteries with it. 40 bucks. Works good. 1080p. Looks great. I know, I know. Everybody's got GoPros and stuff like that, and their voice activated. GoPro on, and then they turn on. Uh, this one has a remote control for my wrist, so I can just pop it on, you know. So it's nice. So, um, and it's got the waterproof 100 meter or 30 meter um, housing and stuff like that. So if you like to record yourself and be out on the water, only 40 bucks for a camera. So that's only 40 bucks. Tackle box is only going to cost you about 15 bucks or something like that. Now, you're in a kayak. You're going to get wet a little bit. Buy waterproof boots. Some kind of waterproof boots. I have, you know, waterproof boots. Unfortunately, they, these are not cheap. You know, waterproof boots are going to run you at least 100 bucks. Now, why do you need waterproof boots? Well, they're nice to have. You don't want to get your feet wet, and you're going to step in the water in and out of your kayak, typically. You're just going to. So, uh, waterproof boots just don't allow any water to come into, onto your feet. Now, some people want to uh, just, you know, wear, like, um, uh, booties or something like that. Um, I, I, I hate feet. I'm a foot guy. I, I'm a, I don't like feet. I want to see feet. I think even girls have ugly feet. It's just feet. I don't like feet. So I cover them. Even at home, I got my boots on. So I cover them. I just don't like feet. But if you want to wear flip-flops or whatever and get your feet wet, and that's fine. But I like having waterproof boots. I can step out of my kayak into my kayak without getting my feet wet and, and uh, my socks dry, stay dry, things like that. So I like those. Also, um, something to keep you warm in cold water. Uh, there are, um, and, and I'll put little things up here for this, um, like one and a half millimeter like wetsuits. They're not really wetsuits, they're one and a half mil. It's really, really thin. And if you do fall in the water, this will keep your body temperature warm and allow you to survive longer. Now, I live in Oregon, so I go in, I, I'm in water that is 33 degrees, 34 degrees, um, just above freezing. And um, if I fell in, you know, it would be, you know, hypothermia would set in rather quickly. So you want to make sure that you have um, something that can preserve you in the water. Also, a dry bag. Uh, dry bags are nice for your electronics and for an extra pair of clothes. A dry bag is going to run you, I don't know, 25 bucks. A nice dry bag. And um, a, a, if you do fall in, you want to get out of those clothes as soon as you can and put on some dry clothes. Uh, you, I mean, unless it's the summer and where you are, it's beautiful and it's hot and things like that. And you like, don't mind being wet. But here in Oregon, you want to get out of your clothes as soon as you can, especially in this time of year when there's still snow on the shore. <laughs> so you just want, you just want to um, have a dry bag with an extra set of clothes. So that's real important to do too. So, and it'll save your electronics too. And I just put it in my kayak, my, my dry bag. So, also, if you're like me, and not too many people are like me, because I'm kind of weird, I do have a traumatic brain injury, and um, it affects my balance. I know, why did I buy a kayak? Well, I bought a kayak for convenience, that's for sure. And it is much more convenient than a boat. So, I'm really unstable. My equilibrium is way off. I used to surf, I used to snowboard, I used to windsurf, I used to skateboard. Anything, I was a really good balance guy growing up and even in my adult years. 
but I got a blood clot and this blood clot has caused damage and uh, it has affected the way I am. So what I did do is I put outriggers, yak gear outriggers on my kayak and that essentially widens my kayak to where it, it can't tip over. So I can fall out and I have fallen out this year of my kayak, but I can't tip my kayak over. And so I can actually, so if you are worried about tipping a kayak over, you know, I think it's, I think those cost like 180 bucks for those outriggers that I got. And I mean, it's safe. My kayak is safe um, for me. Now, if you're 200 pounds, 150 pounds, something like that, um, you know, half my size, and you're you're young and you you're, you have dexterity like I used to have, you don't need it. You don't need outriggers. I need them, and you need to make sure that whatever boat that you buy it fits you and in time it will become your boat it'll have your personality in it and it'll have all your needs and wants in it so these are you know I'm gonna put a list of these things down in the description below with some some links um, for quick links to amazon.com but you you basically want you're going to so let's say you spend eight hundred dollars on a kayak. Let you yeah, that's reasonable. Eight hundred bucks for a decent kayak is a, a decent price. Um, you're going to spend let's see, um, not counting outriggers because that's for me. You may want them, so I add one hundred eighty bucks on it. So one hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred. You're going to add another five hundred dollars at least onto your purchase and in order to get this kayak to you know to the dream that you want it so let's say you spend 800 bucks you're going to spend 1300 dollars that's basically what you're going to do and uh, you know if you don't want a fish finder and eh, knock 140 off of it so you're still you know going to be out you know 1150 you know for it and think about what the, you know that 1300 bucks is going to buy for you i mean i go out i try to go out two to three times a week for myself because of you know it's just i like it um but let's say you go out twice a month that's not bad it's really not that bad um for you know you think that's 24 times a year twice a month on average so 24 times a year you know you pop that into the 1300 what do you got 60 bucks every time you go out uh, for expense for which is one year you know um, and that's what it, you know that is a reasonable thing to um, that's a reasonable amount of money for a hobby I think Maybe it's not. I don't. I mean, I used to play golf. <sighs> Try to go snowboarding. <sighs> Lift tickets are ridiculous nowadays. And, 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 and to be honest, I mean, you only get like a you know half a dozen runs because of lines and stuff like that. Um, so you think about the hobby of fishing. For one, it's it's mentally healthy, and in a world that's all screwed up. It's really nice to have. So I'm going to put a list down below of my suggestions. And I really do think you got to get some of these things. You know, your safety equipment, um, an anchor, believe me. Now, paracord is real important because you can tie to the to dock or to trees or something. You know, extra cord somewhere on your boat is really important. So all these things... And then a couple rod holders, things like that. Um, bungee cords. If you want a camera, great. Um, it's always nice to record stuff. 
I'm lousy at it, as you all know. Um, a dry bag, kind of a necessity. Tackle boxes, waterproof boots, clothing that, you know, can save your life. Um, and then, uh, you know, a net, stuff like that. Those are all things that you're going to add to this, uh, to this kayak purchase. And it's amazing, you know, my, but my buddy just had a simple kayak and all of a sudden he sees everything on mine. He starts adding to his kayak. He's added a lot. And now he wants a better kayak. <laughs> so it kind of, buy a kayak you can grow with. You know, you just, and, and, and maybe I'll put a few suggestions on kayaks down below. Um, you know, Phil Free's got a few uh, that are really nice. Uh, Perception has one that I like, um, the Outlaw. Pretty cool kayak. It's wide open. It's got four rod holders in it, but it's got places for all your tackle. You can put, they got these saddle bags. And believe me, having tackle next to you is important. Really important. I like having my sonar pod where all my electronics are, my fish finder, my hydro wave, everything's right there. Hey. I'm almost done. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, kayak. Well, it's 8 o'clock. People should be up. People should be up. <laughs> Everybody should be out of bed. I get up at 1. They get up at 8, 9, 10, 11. It's crazy. i got to have my chai tea, too. So, I hope this helps you guys out. Enjoy kayaking. Have fun with it. Make sure that you budget in all the extra stuff and make sure you get the extra stuff. Some of it will save your life. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you out on the water.